Okay. It looks like we're live. Can everybody hear us okay? Beautiful. All right. That's what I like to hear. All right, guys. We'll try this for the third time now. This is Risk from Team RBR Trading. I'll try not to get too loud because I know it starts echoing when I do. I have a tendency to talk very loud, so I apologize. Uh, let's go ahead and dive right into our swing trading course. So, we'll start with the basics. What is swing trading? Swing trading, at its simplest, is buying a dip and selling on a peak, right? So we want to buy at the bottom of a downswing, and then we want to sell at the top of an upswing. So swing trading is really all about trying to find that peak and trying to find the valley. So we know when to buy and we know when to sell. What's the difference between a swing trade, a day trade, and a long trade? We won't get too much into that, but long term is typically over a year. Short term would typically be a day or less. Right, so we're typically looking at two days to two months. That's our typical time frame. Okay. So how do we know when to buy? Technical indicators. So we stick with what's simple and we stick with what's proven. There's a lot of different programs out there and there's a lot of different indicators. The, the more foreign that an indicator is, the less likely it's going to be relevant because less people are actually going to be watching it. If you're using some wacky scientific study that nobody's ever ever heard of, it's not doing you any good. You got to stick with what's simple and what people know. People are watching moving averages. They're watching support and resistance lines. They're watching a few basic candlestick patterns. Your average trader does not know a hundred different candlestick patterns, and that's what we're trying to target. Is the average trader is trying to predict the emotion of a trader because that's all we're doing is we're trying to predict emotions right so how do we do that we do that by reading charts so before we can read a chart we need to understand a few basic things so first of all we never want to use a chart like this it's rudimentary it's almost barbaric and it's misleading there's no detail in it you don't see the high you don't see the low you have no intraday data so we're not going to use a mountain chart like this. Instead, we're going to use a candlestick chart. And this is what I really wanted to touch on, because this is where I think a lot of people really struggle when they first start trading. And I don't think there's anything out there that really explains it very well on how to read a candlestick chart. To some of us that have traded for a while, it might seem simple. But if you think back to when you first started, I'm sure you remember we all had a bit of a learning curve there, right? So. Before we get into candlesticks too much, let's look at the components of a chart, right? So we have our time frames, which are typically two spans. We have the time span of the chart we're looking at, and then we have the time span of each individual candle. So if somebody said they're looking at a 1Y, 1D chart, that means they're looking at a one year chart with one day candles. Same thing for the next one, 180 day with four hour candles. So each one gives you a different view. And you're likely not gonna just stick with one chart and one view. You're gonna wanna look at a couple, which is where we get into sink or swim and we start talking about flex trades, which is a whole other video, so I won't get into that. But you wanna look at a few different time frames. You don't wanna just stick with one, right? So it's good to look at, I like to look at a 20 day and then I also like to go in and I look how I like to look at a 180 day. My favorite and my go-to is always going to be the one day, one year chart because it's the most basic, simplest, cleanest chart that you're going to find. And that's what most people are looking at. Okay. So what is a candlestick? Before you can really read a candlestick chart, you need to understand what a candlestick is. So first thing, don't let the colors scare you. A lot of people are scared by the colors. They don't understand it. They see black candles, white candles, red candles, green candles, wicks and bodies and all these crazy terms. 
and it all can seem really overwhelming, but it's not. It's really basic. So if you look here at the first candle on the left, we can see right here, we have a green candle, okay? If this candle is green, all that it means is that the stock closed at a price that was higher than where it opened, meaning when the day started, meaning the day could have started at $6 and ended at $7. That would be a green candle. Now, you can don't confuse that by just meaning, well, we had a positive day. You could have a red candle and still be positive, okay? So you could have a stock that starts, let's say on Monday, it's $5. Tuesday, the stock, some news comes out, let's say, right? And the price goes up to $20 a share. And then at the end of the day, it closes at, let's say, fifth, let's say uh, 15. Well, that would still be a red candle. Even though it represents over a 100% increase, that's still a red candle, right? So that's where we have to look at that and understand what really is a red candle. It doesn't mean that the stock had a bad day. It just means that it closed lower than where it opened, right? So we'll back up a little bit and what are the basic components? Well, we've got the body of the candle, right? So here's the body of the candle. I don't know if you guys can see my cursor or not, but this is the body of the candle. And then we have on the top and the bottom of it, we have the wick. So the bottom of the body is where it opened. The top of the body is where it closed for a green candle. And for a red candle, the top of the candle is where it opened. And the bottom is where it closed. The wick represents the absolute lowest price of the day. So if the price had dropped to $4.50 and then closed at $5, for instance, right? So that's the difference between the wick and the bottom of that candle. It all has to do with what is the lowest price, where did it close? Now, as far as colors go, all it is is, a, is preference, right? It's just preference, that's all it is. So you don't have to worry about it. You've got charts that use green and red, and then you have charts that use black and white. When you're looking at the black and white candles, it's the same thing. A black is, a, is the same as a red candle, okay? It just means that it closed lower than where it opened. Doesn't mean it had a bad day. A lot of people get confused on that. So I want to clear that one up. All right, so hopefully we have a basic understanding of what a candlestick is. So what are we going to talk about next? Let's look at technical indicators, okay? So what is a technical indicator? Well, this is from Wikipedia directly. Technical indicators are heuristic or pattern-based signals produced by the price and volume. So, now these are my words. So trading is, at its simplest form, nothing more than understanding price and volume because those are the only true data points. Those are the only true data points that are out there to be measured. Everything else is simply measuring those two data points, price and volume. Every indicator that's out there uses those and those only, okay? Seems crazy, but it's true. So, do you need to know all of the indicators? No, you don't. There's, there's a ton of them out there, and you don't need to know them all. I, I've seen guys who, they, they send me a chart, and they go, hey, can you look at this? Do you think this is a good stock? And I see their chart, and they've got, you can't even see the chart because it's all indicators and lower studies. And I'm like, man, I, I can't even tell what I'm looking at here. So don't be that guy. Keep it simple. It, you can break it down into a few key types of indicators. And I'm not going to get totally into that, but there's a few key types that we'll look at. We've got momentum, right? Different things like that. So let's go a couple over a couple of ones we do want to know. Okay. So this is where it's really important. And like I said, none of this is really that hard. I'm, I'm willing to bet that any of you guys could go be successful traders. It's not as hard as people make it out to be. Uh, oh, the, the Daxco asked, would you repeat that again, the portion where the red candle can be a positive? Yes, let me go back to that. Okay, so you could have a green candle, which means what? A green candle means that the stock price closed 
higher than where it opened. So if a stock opened at $5 and closed at $6, it would be a green candle. A red candle simply means that the stock price closed lower than where it opened, meaning when the day started, for example, the stock was at $5. At the end of the day, it could be at $4. Okay. Now on the flip side, let's say if on Wednesday, stock, uh, whatever, plug, is trading at $20 a share, and then some news comes out that they got a new big customer. Well, let's say plug gaps up to $50. Wouldn't that be great, right? Let's say it gaps up to $50. And remember, it was at $20 at 84. It gaps up to $50. Then a lot of selling pressure comes in. It drops down, it drops down. And let's say it settles around $40 by the end of the day. So it closes at 40 bucks. Well, that's still going to be a red candle, okay? Because the price opened at $40 or $50 or whatever, and it closed at $30, okay? So the prior day's price action is not relevant. What's relevant is each intraday candle where it opens and where it closes. The prior candle has nothing to do with it. So hopefully that will clear that up for you. Okay, so technical indicators. Let's go over a couple of basic indicators here. So we're going to look at moving averages. These are probably one of our favorites, right? Everybody's looking at moving averages. We're, yeah, so, so pre-market and post-market hours. Exactly, right? So And, and even if there was no pre-market and post-market hours, right? So And that's not really anything to do with it. All, all it is is where does it open and where does it close? So uh, moving averages, what is a moving average? RSI, what is RSI? RSI is Relative Strength Index. VWAP, MACD, which ties in with moving averages. Then we've got candlestick patterns, support and resistance lines, and trend channels. So what are all these things? These are all things that are going to help us to identify the best swing trades that are out there. Let's go ahead and jump into the first one. So we're going to take a look here at a plug chart. This is a one day, one year chart. And what I'm going to do is just point out a couple of things to you guys as to what I go through in my process when I look at a stock. Okay. So here we've got a chart for plug. This is a one day, one year chart. Now, Again, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor or not. I think you can see my cursor. Yeah, you can. Okay. So what I look for is I look for when we're playing a, a stock like this, and keep in mind, every stock is going to be a little bit different. But in this case, this is one of my favorite kinds of setups. And why? It's because the chart's very easy to read. Even the newest traders could look at this chart, and they can tell when the buy zone is right? The more easily traders are able to recognize where that buy zone is at, the better trade you're going to have, right? So we can see here back in June, June 19th, 2020, right here, we started to form an uptrend, okay? At this point, it was, it was kind of hard to actually recognize any pattern, right? Because we didn't have enough data to actually recognize a pattern. So we can see we went up here and we had a nice peak. We had a nice peak right up here around maybe $10.50. Okay, It peaked, then the selling pressure came in, sellers started taking profits, so then the price started going down. And it went down and it went down for about two weeks and then one day price dropped, crossed underneath the moving average, bounced back and closed right here. So this is the key candle we're looking at right here. This is your reversal candle. So this, if you were, if you had just happened to pull up this chart on this day and you were looking at it, you would say, hey, that's a nice reversal candle. That, that could potentially be a trade I might want to take. Well, you can make two decisions at that point. You could say, okay, 
A, I'm either going to wait for confirmation and I'm going to see what the price action looks like tomorrow, or I'm going to take a little more risk and I'm going to enter the trade today. Okay? So, obviously the guy who entered the who took a little more risk and entered the trade without a confirmation candle would have gotten a nicer profit. Now, what is a confirmation candle? Well, you could have a candle that looks like it's going to reverse and it's right on a support line or a moving average, right? Because that's the biggest thing is we're looking for reversal signs that are occurring along a support or resistance line or along a trend channel or along a moving average. So in this case, we're using the moving average, right? So no, there's, and this isn't any particular uh, candlestick pattern or anything like that. This is just a chart I've randomly pulled up, okay? But anyways, we can see that right after that, we had a big gap up candle, big green candle, a few candles after that, and then it continued to rise up to $14. Selling pressure came in, People started buying again, right in here, and then selling pressure came in again. Well, at that point, now, what do we have here? We had a really nice resistance line, because now, this resistance line had been tested twice, right? So now, we've got a double top here, almost tested again in September, and then finally, it looks like in late September, maybe early October, it busted through. So it busted through, big gap up candle, look at that, it jumps all the way up to $16 in one day, then another beautiful candle, and then another gorgeous candle right after that. And that was a great trade, right? Now, selling pressure starts coming in, because now look, we're starting to get pretty far away from that original moving average we bounced off of. So now selling pressure starts coming in, the shorts start loading up, and the price goes down. And then what happens is you've got a lot of traders that are now watching this moving average. This was one stock that we actually called, and this was one of our, one of many of our great trades that we've done in the last month, two months or so. I know we alerted this one at $13.96, and that was on, what, middle of October? And then look at that, right after we alerted it, and, and what did I look at when I was alerting it? I looked at this. I looked at the moving average, right? And then look at that. The very next day, one gap up candle, two gap up candles, three, four, five. And look at that. In two weeks, the price has doubled. It's gone up all the way to $28. So now let's look at the current price action and what's actually relevant in the market right now. If, if you were to ask me, hey, Risk, should I pick up some plug right now? What do you think I would probably tell you? If I'm just looking at purely a technical analysis standpoint, I'm going to tell you no, because I'm looking at this chart here, and I'm thinking, man, no, this is way, way overbought, right? So selling pressure is definitely going to start coming in. People are going to start taking profits. Now, that's not taking into account anything else, right? That's not taking into account that the EV market is on fire right now, because that's definitely a factor. And could this keep running? It could definitely keep running. But we're no longer trading on charts at that point. At that point, we're doing what's called gambling, right? Because now we're just trying to predict and guess what the market's going to do. You're no longer trading with indicators. So this is not a trade that I would take anymore. I personally closed my profits out around 22, right? Which to me was about the right zone. And I think a lot of other traders were probably closing profits out there too. At this point, you look at the amount of risk. You see all of this risk down here. To what the reward is, it's just not a trade I would take. Okay? Alright. So, let's look a little bit closer now into the peaks and valleys on this chart. So, as you guys can see, we've got a couple of valleys here. Right? One valley, two valleys, three valleys. And then on the flip side of that, and that's, of course, where we're going to come in and we want to buy, right? We want to buy in those valleys, unless, of course, we're shorting, because I'll tell you, folks, there's, there's no such thing as a bad market. There's, there's no such thing. You can make money in a bear market. You can make money in a bull market. And the best traders, 
can make money in both, right? So here we go. Now we can see what the chart looks like when we're looking at the peaks, which is where we would hopefully be wanting to sell, right? Or adversely opening up a short position, okay? All right, so let's start diving in a little bit deeper into some of these indicators. Let's look at moving averages, okay? So there's a few different types of moving averages. So we've got simple moving averages, our SMA, we've got our EMA, our, our exponential moving average. There's, there's probably about three or four different moving averages. Do we need to know them all? No, you don't. You don't need to even know what exponential means. You don't need to know what simple means. Don't worry about any of that. Pick one and stick with it and don't worry about it because in all honesty, they're all about the same and it doesn't matter to me. They all work just the same to me. Personally, I use a simple moving average. It's just what I like. It's simple. So, uh, but what is a moving average? So moving averages are a little tricky and they're not easy to explain. A moving or a running average is the average price of a security on any given time frame. So you could have a 10 day moving average. You could have a 20 day moving average. What are the most common ones? Well, a lot of people use a 10 day, a 50 day, a 100 day, 150 day, and a 200 day. So obviously the longer that that number is, the smoother that your moving average is gonna be. It's gonna be less volatile. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to take a few different time frames, let's say a 10 day, a 50 day, and a 100 day, and overlay them all on a chart. And now you can look at a long-term chart and you can see what the short-term trend is as opposed to the long-term trend, as opposed to the medium-term trend. And then that's when we start getting into convergences and divergences, okay? But essentially, all we're doing, if we're looking at for example, a 10 day moving average, right? We're just looking at a 10 day moving average. How is that calculated? Well, that moving average line is going to end up on exactly the price of the average of the last 10 trading days, right? So if you took those last 10 trading days and you whipped out your calculator, thought back to calculus or whatever algebra, and you figured out the average, well, that's exactly where that line would end up. And then the next day, you would do the same thing, except it would only go back those 10 days. And that just repeats and continues itself. So, the higher the time frame we use on our moving average, or our MA, the smoother it will be, okay? So, this brings us to one of our best friends when we're swing trading, our MACD, our moving average convergence and divergence, okay? So now that we have a basic understanding of moving averages, what is MACD? So MACD is known as a lower study because it lies below your chart as opposed to an overlaid study, like let's say moving average. Even though a moving average could be also underneath your chart if you had so set it up to be. But Technically, these are the terms that we are going to use. So, when a long-term and a short-term moving average converge or cross each other, oh, it looks like I got a typo there, oops, or cross each other, it is a sign that the trend is changing. So, MACD takes this data and it lays it under your chart for a quick, clean view. Rather than you having to pull up your chart and look at a 10-day, a 20-day, and a 50 and watching them, seeing where they're crossing, and when you have a lot of moving averages on your chart, it can get a little messy, right? This does all the hard work for you. So let's take a look at what is a MACD. Let's see what it actually looks like in action. So if you look at the bottom here, this is our MACD histogram. So if you wanted to add this to your chart in Sink and Swim, all you would do is you would go pull up your chart, you would right click, and you would hit Studies, Add New Study, all studies and then you would go in alphabetical order pull it down to m and then you would look for macd histogram that is the one that you want to use okay so this is not 
all on its own a tool for opening a position. Okay, this you got to remember all of these are just one tool that you're going to use. Okay, so but essentially how it works is as our moving averages converge or diverge with each other, these green bars will start to go up. So at its simplest form, and I'm not going to get too deep into it, and I probably should have overlaid a couple of moving averages onto the chart above to help make it a little bit simpler to understand, but all you need to know is that when a long-term trend crosses a short-term trend, so for example, on this chart, our long-term trend is obviously going to be curling up. If we were looking at a 200-day moving average, it would probably be right around where my cursor is running, right here. Okay. Whereas our short-term moving average would be almost pointing straight north, right up to the sky. Right. So that would mean that right around here, you would see that those two moving averages would run into each other. Right. You would have one running this way, and then you would have another one running this direction. So those two moving averages would converge with each other. Now, what happens when they converge with each other? Well, these little green candles down here would turn from red to green. Now, these they don't always turn at the perfect time. And sometimes when I look back at a chart, I think it's lying to me and I'm going, there's no way that the MACD was that close and called it that spot on. So I don't always believe the, the histogram part of it, but it does work great for the current, right? And, and it is just one indicator of many that you need to use. So you can see here, it turned green, went up, 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 up. They hit a maximum point. And then if you were looking at this chart, you would have sold right here. If you were just solely trading on the MACD, right? If you weren't looking at volume or any other indicator, you would have sold right there, which puts us where? It puts us right about here. So you would have sold right about here at $24. So you would have missed out on about $20, $29. So about $5 worth of profit. Well, that's not bad. That's still a pretty good trade, especially let's just say if you had actually picked up this stock where the MACD was at its lowest and it started to diverge. Well, you would have bought it right here where it had turned from light bright red to dark red is right where you would be picking it up, right? You would want to go wait for a couple of confirmation candles because it can go, it can look like it's going green and then reverse itself quickly. So if you would have bought right there, you would have probably bought right around $15. So just trading off of MACD, you can see you would have gotten a 70% gain on this trade. Not bad. Okay. So let's look at another indicator here. RSI, Relative Strength Index. This is a great one and another tool that you've got to have in your toolbox, right? RSI. So what this does, and it's very simple, it's measuring momentum, okay? So you're just taking, like I, like I told you guys, there's only two data points that are ever being measured on any indicator, right? Price and volume, right? So what this indicator is looking at is it's looking at the price change data on one period compared to another period. So they're taking price uh, gain versus price loss. And they're looking at that total, uh, it's almost like a volatility index, right? So our, an RSI over 70 is considered bullish and an RSI under 30 is considered bearish, right? So at its simplest, what it's doing is looking at buying and selling pressure. We're looking, when you hear somebody say, hey, this stock looks overbought or it looks oversold, well, more than likely, they're looking at an RSI indicator. So let's take a look at one in action. So here's plug again, and we're looking at an RSI lower study at the bottom of the chart. Okay, so we can see here, plug never really does drop into what's considered a low MACD. Uh, we look here and it, it comes pretty close, but it never quite gets there. But when we, we have this line right here, which this line, like I said, see it's 70, and that's what's typically respected is 70 is when it goes bullish. 30 is when it's considered bearish. So what are people doing with these two lines? So they're watching them. And what are they doing? So if you were a bull and you wanted to know 
when do I buy this stock? You want to obviously get the cheapest price you can get. You don't want to buy in the middle of this upswing, right? You want to buy right here. That's how you're profitable. Every one of these candles that you miss out on, you're losing money, right? So you want to buy at the absolute lowest. So that's where RSI can help you. So you can look at RSI and you can say, hey, I'm bullish on this stock. I need to find the right time to open a position. You want to try to catch the RSI at its lowest. So if you were looking at just RSI and you go back to March, it almost kissed 30. It just barely missed it. Okay, That would have been your indicator to buy. If you would have bought it back in March at $2.53, look what it would be worth today. Now, you, if you were swing trading, you would not be holding it today. Let's not get things confused. We're not long-term trading, okay? We're swing trading. You would have bought it at $2.53, and then you would have sold it right here, which is, wow, look at that, $4. So, really, even though the, the chart doesn't show it, Plug has been doing this for quite a while. It's been, it's been a nice, choppy chart, and these nice, choppy charts are the best ones to trade. I mean, when you can look at a chart like this and you can see these clear patterns, that's, that's what it's all about, folks, right? So now let's look at the high end of RSI. We see the bulls take control right back here in June. Bulls take control and they start running up. They run it up, they run it up, they run it up, they bring it from $6 all the way up to $10. Well, selling pressure gets to be too great. People start taking profits. And look at that, RSI is way off the charts, all the way up to 80, very high, right? Well, good indicator because look at that, the price starts dropping, okay? So it's a great indicator. It gives us an idea of what are the buyers doing and what are sellers doing, okay? So next, let's take a look at a couple of candlestick patterns and how important are they? Here we go. Okay, the candlestick. How important are they? Like a lot of other things, I'm going to tell you, they're honestly not that important. You don't need to know hundreds and hundreds of candlestick patterns, but you do need to know the basic ones. Okay? So, my tip for you is to take something like this, which you can get on Google just by doing a quick image search. Just type in candlestick patterns, save it on your desktop so you see it. Or you can print it, hang it on the wall. Right? I, I like to tell people, print up your, your uh, candlestick patterns, hang it, and then write up a trading agreement, right? your trading plan, your agreement with yourself of how you're going to trade, how much you're going to invest on each trade, what profit you're going to look at, right? because if, if you're not going in with a plan and you're new to this, you're going to get burned. Now, okay, guys that have been doing this for 10, 15 years, no, we're not doing that. Right, but we've been doing this for a long time. But for a new trader, it really is important to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're going to get burned. Okay, so let's look at a couple of candlestick patterns here. So we've got a couple of common ones here. We've got engulfings, right? We've got tweezers. Tweezers is a really nice one. Now, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. There's a lot of cool candlestick patterns, and there's some guys out there that can rattle them off, right? And that's just great for them, right? Uh, you don't need to know hundreds of candlestick patterns. And I'm going to tell you, all that really matters is that this pattern is occurring right along a support or resistance line. And I'll tell you, it doesn't have to be some fancy pattern. If you've got a nice big candle that's sitting right on a nice moving average, that's a nice buy signal. I don't care if it's a three white soldier or a black crow or a spinning top. If you're looking for a price that's bouncing off a move right on average, or a support or resistance line. That's what people are watching, right? So it helps to know these candlestick patterns. So I, I don't want to undercut the value of knowing these because there is value there. But do you need to know hundreds? No. And honestly, folks, you're going to naturally learn the names of these as you go along, right? Yeah. So don't worry too much. People get, they get, they get really worried about trying to learn all these candlestick patterns at the very beginning and that's something people always ask me was well how many candlestick patterns do i need to know what are the best ones this and that but guys it's not that important you just need to understand the basics right so what are the basics the basics are really 
understanding how a candlestick pattern interacts with a support and resistance line, right? Because you could have a beautiful candlestick pattern. You could have a nice big doji star, but if it is not occurring on a support or resistance line, that it's meaningless. It has to occur along a support or resistance line. So support or resistance lines, they are the single most powerful indicator you're ever going to use. When you have a price that's tested twice or three times or even four times, that's the best indicator you'll ever have in your life. That is it, and that is the cream of the crop. Okay? So we use candlestick patterns along with our support and resistance line or a trend line, which is a little different. So obviously, if you've got a stock like Plug that's constantly moving in an uptrend, you're never going to be able to draw a support and resistance line. You're just not going to do it because a stock like Plug is so bullish that it's just constantly making new highs and it's constantly making new high lows, right? So it's not going to work. So instead, on a stock like that, we use a trend channel. Now, let's go ahead and let's jump in and let's draw a trend channel, okay? So here's Plug, here's Spy, sorry, not Plug. So here's Spy here. And we can look at it and we can go, hey, actually, you know what, hold on. Let's do a support and resistance line first because we haven't covered that yet. I don't want to get too ahead of myself here, folks. So looking at SPY here on a one-year, one-day chart, let's see if we can identify where the support and resistance line is at. Do you guys see where the support is at? Let's look. Well, right here, we can see that this price was respected a few times right here and then it was respected again over here and then right over here it almost got hit again and then it bounced up right so we can see we have one two we've got three points where this price was supported, okay? So that's a nice support line for us. And it's a nice line that we can draw a nice line through. Let's see here, there it is. So we can draw a nice, clean, straight line. It's always gonna be a nice horizontal line. And then we're gonna be able to identify a nice resistance that goes along with it. Okay, so there we go. Now here on the top side, we've got our resistance line. We've got one, two, different times that this price was respected. Now, does it need to be exact? No, it doesn't have to fall exactly on the right spot, right? It just needs to be close. So we can see right here, right around this zone at $355, we started getting a lot of selling pressure, right? And this is where I try to tell people, it doesn't need to be exact, it just needs to be close, right? And you can see that it was respected, right? Right here, a lot of selling pressure, dips down, comes back up, and then we start getting more selling pressure. Same thing, right? Dips down, comes back up, and then you can see it kind of halts, it falters a little bit right here, and then look at that, nice double top, and it gaps up and gaps out, breaks out. So now at this point, we would expect to see that the old resistance line is often going to act as the new support line. And you're going to find that this happens a lot, right? So when you've got a nice bullish stock like that, it's going to break out and your old resistance will be your new support, okay? So now that we're done getting ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at a trend channel. Because like I said, on a lot of stocks, you're just never going to be able to draw a horizontal line up through them. It's just not going to happen. There's some super bullish stocks out there, okay? especially if you're looking at a one-year time frame, which is what we like to use, because we want to see the big picture. We're not little picture people. We're not day trading. We want to see what that long-term trend looks like. It's important to us, okay? So here is our SPY chart, and I've gone ahead and just drawn a really basic trend channel through it. It's nothing fancy, but your two lines should be at the same angle. So if you use, say, a 70-degree angle for your bottom trend channel, your top trend channel should be running at the same angle to it, right? So they should be symmetrical to each other, okay? Now, you want to try to find at least two points or more, minimum of two points, where 
this chart is kissing the top and the bottom of that trend channel. And if you got that, then you know you found a good trend channel. So we can see right here, kiss the bottom, right? Came up, kiss the top. Dip down, kiss the top again, tried to break out unsuccessfully. Dip down, back up, boom, hit the bottom again, okay? So, is, is this actually a real trend channel in real life I would be watching? No, probably not, but for today's purpose, this works for us to get the point across, okay? I'm not saying that SPY is necessarily traveling in this trend, but this is a rough idea of how you would want to draw out a trend channel, okay? So, here's the thing, guys. What's the most important secret that nobody wants you to know? I'll tell you. It's having friends. I'm telling you, it's hard to trade, and it's even harder to trade alone. I mean, we've got the odds stacked up against us when we're trading, especially if you're day trading, right? I mean, less than 1% of 1% of people are successful and profitable. It's that low, right? Now, when you're doing it on your own, it's that much harder, okay? That's where Team RVR comes in, and we help each other out. When you've got 50, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 1,000 people all working together to find the best stock, that's when something truly magical happens, right? Because one of us alone will never be as strong as the many, okay? So, what's the second part? Well, the second part is hard work. And this is what I tell people. This is my number one word of wisdom I ever get out to people. You don't have to be the smartest guy. You really don't. You don't. I know a lot of smart people who are losers. And I know a lot of dumb people that are winners. It's all about drive and motivation. You could be the dumbest guy, but you could work your ass off and you could be a millionaire. You could be the smartest guy and you could live in your mom's basement. It's not relative. All that's relative is how much time and effort you put in. Now, we could spend a lot of time searching for stocks. So, obviously, one thing that we want to look at is scanners. That's our other best friend. Now, scanners can seem really overwhelming and scary when we're all first starting out, but they're really not. There's a lot of great YouTube videos out there that'll get you started. I've even got one or two myself, so members know that they can go look in Team RVR Academy and they can go brush up and even the most experienced traders might learn a thing or two. Okay? But scanners are our best friend. Back in the day, when I was searching for stocks, I had to sit down, go on to Yahoo message boards, pull up hundreds of stocks, and just search through them one by one without any real direction until I found something I liked, right? And it wasn't a good use of time. Nowadays, I'm able to use a scanner, which it sounds scary, but it's not. It's pretty simple. All a scanner is, is it's looking for some of these technical indicators that we talked about today, like a MACD convergence or, di or divergence, right? So we have scanners where we can plug in and we can say, hey, scanner, Show me stocks where the MACD has converged in the last three days. And that scanner is going to pull it up for us, right? And we can use, and we can put a couple different things in there. So this is where scanners really are our best friend. They really are. Now, there's a lot of really expensive scanners out there. And this is one thing that I've always found that a lot of the gurus, uh, the wannabe gurus, the animal farm, or whatever you want to call it, they, they try to keep people in the dark. And why? Because they don't want you guys to do good. They don't want you to make money. They want you to keep transferring your money to them, following their pump and dumps, same in, same out, right? Don't do it. You're going to use a scanner, and the scanner is going to be your best friend, right? So, let's see. Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask? I'll, I'll open it up here to anybody who's got any questions, uh, and I'll quickly browse through here and see if I can answer any. Okay, let's see. Uh, is it safe to buy anything under an RSI of 30? Uh, yeah, I would say 
if you were watching an RSI and you were using that as one of your indicators, that would be the zone that you would want to be buying at. So you would not want to be buying when an RSI is over, say, 70. That's when you would want to think about selling. So, so yes, RSI under 30, not necessarily meaning it, you want to buy it, but meaning it's one indicator of a few that you should be looking at that's going to successfully tell you, yes, this is a good stock, right? Uh, now, oh, I lost track. So also, we want to talk about what are some of these scanners, right? Now, a lot of people, they're not going to tell you this. There's a lot of really expensive scanners out there, folks. You've got scans, which is C-A-S-C-A-N-Z, and they're about, I want to say, $120 a month to get just scanning services and $50, I think, for their market services or $170 a month for both. You've also got Trade Ideas, another good one. They're about anywhere between $180 to $230 a month. So these things can get expensive and especially for a lot of new traders that are just starting out with maybe $500 to 1000 bucks in their account, that's a big pill to swallow. I mean, $200 a month, that's what a lot of people are paying for their car payment. Who, who can afford that, right? Oh, only the traders that have been doing it for a long time can afford that or the ones that do it for a living. So you don't need all that software. There's a lot of great software out there that's free. And our go-to and the one that we use is our number one brokerage is Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim has a great and free scanner built in an amazing charting platform, and I, don't, I have no affiliation with Thinkorswim whatsoever, but I will plug them until the day I die because they have great software and they're free, okay? I believe even if you are tied up with another brokerage, you can go open up a Thinkorswim account, put $100 in it, which I believe is the minimum deposit, and now you have full access to that scanner, everything. The two I will always recommend Thinkorswim or Weeble. Weeble for mobile, Thinkorswim for trading at home. Yep, and, and Finviz is another good one. There's, there's a lot of good ones out there. Uh, okay, default pick says, what up risk? Can you ever find and use patterns within the RSI to determine entry and exits? There, I wouldn't say that you're looking at patterns within the RSI. All you're really looking at and the RSI is you're looking at that top line and that bottom line. So you're looking for it to get either close to the top at 70 or close to the bottom at 30. And that's what you're going to use as one of your indicators. Because uh, I'll tell you, typically, I don't spend that much time looking at a chart. A lot of people are probably thinking like, oh, wow, you must spend 20 or 15 or 30 minutes looking at a chart. No, not really. I mean, you pull up a chart, especially if you're going through 100, 150 a day like I do. You pull up a chart, you look at it, usually within, for me at least, within about five seconds or less, I know whether it's a trade I even want to look at. And 95% of trades, I, I'm done looking at them within about one to five seconds because I instantly know that's not what I'm looking for, right? So, uh, but yeah. You're not looking at specific patterns, you're just simply looking at that value, which is either going to be greater than 70, which is going to be your selling point, or less than 30, which would be your buying point, or close to it. Uh, how, do you, how do some stocks run so high pre-market with low volume? Uh, I would say a lot of them are probably pump and dump. Uh, I would say the majority of them are. If something's trading high pre-market without very much volume, and that's something to be aware of, even though you might not see anybody pumping a stock on stock twist, that doesn't mean that it's not being pumped. There's a lot of pumped Discord groups out there that pump stocks, uh, and it is something to be aware of. There's even people who are on Weeble pumping stocks. So be aware of something that's running pre-market without a whole lot of volume, and be leery. And this is why I try to tell most people, unless you spend at least five years trading, I would not even mess around with pre-market. A lot of people feel like they're missing out on something by not trading pre-market. You're not missing out on that much. You're, you're really not. All you're doing is you're opening yourself up to a lot more risk. Uh, when, when I day trade, 
I usually day trade for about the first hour of the day, and that's it. Sometimes a little bit later till about 9.30 Pacific time, right? But, yeah. Um, yeah, Thinkorswim is awesome. It is. I love Thinkorswim, and I've been using it for years. And I'm surprised still how many people tell me, hey, I have TD Ameritrade. What's Thinkorswim? And they don't know. They don't know what Thinkorswim is, or they think it's a completely different broker. It's amazing how many people are surprised to find out that they're two of the same. So, all right. Any other questions here? Did I miss anybody? Let's see. My dogs are barking now. All right, guys. Well, hey, it's been fun. Thanks, everybody. Have yourself a great night. Uh, and if you're not already on the team and you're interested in getting started and bringing your trading to the next level, go ahead and check my profile, Risk Verse Reward on Stock Splits. That's Risk VS Reward. Happy trading, folks. Have a good one.